Okay, so what do you understand by lean? Can you just tell me the English meaning of lean? Sleek, thin. Okay. Sleek, thin. Tiny, narrow. <laughs> narrow. So yes, exactly. Lean meaning, meaning thin, uh, slim trim. Okay. Yeah, this is exactly what mean. I mean, no fat, no extra stuff, just to the point. So if 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 we are uh, if if you don't have, if you don't there is no extra flesh in the body, we call you person is lean, right? So this is what exactly it means. Removing the waste from the project is lean. Okay, so when I say removing the least waste from the project, it means that I am not implementing the functionality which is not needed. <clears throat> I am <clears throat> sorry, I am not focusing on um, unnecessary stuff. I am just working to the point. I am just focusing on the business performance. I am just perform business requirement, and once. Um, and my solutions are all based on achieving what I actually need. Okay, so uh, to do this, so this is one one of the big uh, um, uh, one of the items under the umbrella of agile is lean. Okay, so here we we are continuously working on. Uh, working on implementing only those functionalities or probably working on that aspect of project which is just needed. So this might also mean that I am not implementing the Kodi standards as of now. Right? I, I would write a code probably I'm not, uh, I have not implemented uh, it using oops concept. I just wrote everything. I wanted to do 3 plus 2. I just hard coded everything and just delivered the result 5. Right? My main intention is I delivered that 3 plus 2 is 5. I did not focus how I got it, but I just achieved it. I did not waste my time implementing or improvising the quality standard, the coding standard. I did not waste my time on any of this stuff. I just focused on what actually was needed. So actually I needed was 3 plus 2. Once I got it, I said I, I have delivered the functionality, but here it is the catch is it does not mean that you would not focus on this refactoring of the code. This refactoring of the code would be in discussion, in transparency with the client, would be done at the later stage. Okay, so my main <coughs> agenda here is that I am living the acceptance criteria I'm meeting the acceptance criteria and I'm delivering what is needed. So it, it, it is beneficial where you know uh, when, when you have very less time and you just want to have a quality product where you just want to have all the features properly implementing, they are working properly. This is where the lean would best fit in. And probably the code can be improvised at the later stages. So lean is about thinking differently. Lean says eliminate waste, right? So when I'm working in lean, as I mentioned, I'm just working to the point. I am not focusing on uh, extra additional stuff. I'm working on what exactly is needed. I am amplifying my learning. Since I am doing a constant review, I have a increased feedback cycles are there because I'm not I'm just focused on delivering the product. I'm just working too fast to get it done. The f there would be a uh, decreased constant, uh, decreased uh, feedback cycle. I mean, the time of the feedback cycle would be reduced. And since I'm doing that and I'm implementing the feedback as fast as possible, so I'm learning through it. That how I can deliver a quality product. I get feedbacks early at a very early stage, so I know what things I need to take care of in the future. Now. Next is decide as late as possible. Can somebody tell me what would that mean? <clears throat> I mean, I mean uh, one thing would be to get as many feet 
yeah as many feedbacks as many feedbacks as possible like from all the stakeholders and then uh, instead of hurrying into the decision like just take take everybody's perspective and then take one uh, a, a call out of it no but then um, you know that would uh, uh, reduce the impact of having the feedback then i would not be amplifying my learning there i got the feedback but if i did not make use of it no point having a feedback to certain extent yes it is right i would pick up the feedbacks which are really important i would not uh, negate that statement completely but i would uh, just pick up the few important stuff so i will bar my decisions on anything maybe a hiring a resource or maybe uh, getting a new server or maybe any decision i can i would try to bar it as much as i can because the later i decide more clarity i would have mm right so uh, in one way maybe um, about taxation system right i started working on a taxation system uh, in maybe um, june right and my summer budget is happening and i'm not sure uh, what if there would be some changes in the service tax if there would be some changes in the vat if i go while the budget is happening in june only if i go and implement it and if things get changed in the budget i would have to go back to it and implement it later again that is a double effort for me but if i bar the decision okay let since i would not be needing a taxation system before february or maybe before january if it's a huge or you would start maybe uh, preparing it in jan so let me bar the decision till november i'll wait till november so that if if at all any changes have to be made it would be done in a winter session and i would implement it then makes sense yeah yeah then is deliver as fast as possible which is again a simple agile principle i have been we have been uh, talking about deliver as fast as possible deliver as quick delivery cycles are there empower the team your team owns everything you it's not that they are not guided or commanded to do something they own it right build quality build quality in so since uh, the stakeholder involvement in agile is pretty high right the quality of have any product that would be delivered would always be pretty high because since stakeholders can see the product on almost a daily basis or on a weekly basis they would be reviewing it they would be giving it the feedback so you are building the quality you are ensuring the end product they would the confidence level of their end product would be very high then it says see the whole it says think big right don't just focus on one thing think from a bigger think on a big, bigger picture see the bigger picture how it would help now for example Uh, if i'm the same example of a taxation system uh, for an erp system a taxation is a very high requirement but had i not seen the budget budgets and the time where i am going to implement it i would have done it i did not see the bigger picture that there are budget coming in so coming in there would be some changes in the taxes slabs or maybe something i saw the bigger picture and i held on my decision i did not implement it right so see the bigger picture see think big okay then so, uh, so let's see what are the benefits of uh, lean after listening i uh, let's discuss the benefits like so what do you think would be the uh, mo- so where what is the biggest benefit you see of implementing this approach yeah uh, one is optimal uh, utilization like what whatever resources we've got and uh, using it to the, to the best means like uh, as we said like getting rid of the waste and and taking the cream out of your resources i mean not not only human resources i mean every all sorts of resources and using the cream out right. of it hmm. yes exactly and, and anybody else yeah same i mean um i mean what what is needed uh, what is the actual need identify it deliver it there is no extra things no waste waste things 
Mm. Right. So I'll just read the slides. I think uh, all of you have answered that. So it identifies the value. What is the value? So what would give you the maximum value to the customer? And we try to eliminate the waste. We do not focus on priority three and priority four. Our focus is first on the priority one items. Right. If I talk from a defect backlog perspective, if I have to be lean, my focus would be fixing the priority one. Priority threes and priority fours can be taken care of later. Right. Mm. Then I'm continuously improving the pursuit of perfection since I'm getting the continuous feedback. Right. So if I am working on priority one defects, if one of the one or two of the defects are probably uh, reopen or they they need to be refixed, I might be uh, fixing some number of priority three and priority four defects when while I am fixing priority one. It could be right. Yeah. Yeah. So I am improving continuously. And customer sees the value addition. I am adding a value. I am building a trust in the eyes of the customer. So now, when we are talking about lean, there are three types of waste. One is called muda, muri, and mura. So what is muda? Which it says work which absorbs resource but adds no value. So we should not work on that item or a product or a uh, task which is adding no value like but is consuming my resource so for example if uh, i am uh, trying to improvise my code when there is a important delivery to go ahead i am i am focusing on the customer uh, on the coding standards and adding comments it is consuming my time but it, it's not adding uh, the value for that particular moment right then Muri, unreasonable work that is imposed on works, workers and machines, same like coding, coding, implementing of the coding standards at that particular time. If I'm implementing, if my, uh, I don't want to do it, but my manager keeps telling me, oh, do it, do it, do it, that is Muri. So it, that is imposing of the work. Then Mura, it's, so Lean says, Lean says uh, that works come in ticks and bits. You would be working it in an incremental way. There would be, there would be a never a situation when you get a big bang amount of a work. Since you are working on the priorities, you even if you while uh, Im implementing something, you saw something that needs th that this should be done this way. So, for example, if in a login screen, my requirement says username cannot be uh, should be three or more characters, right? But while I was developing it, I realized there are many people with no name Joe, J O Joe. Right? I will just go back. <coughs> I will just go back to the client and ask him that it needs to be. That this is an improvement request. This needs to be uh, modified. This needs to be implemented. My client would reprioritize that for me. So if he'll feel that okay, this needs to be implemented now and then only, he'll give me a priority. And he will pull out the same amount of work for that particular task, right? So if one new thing is added, other thing of equal priority or equal effort would be taken out. In Scrum, the requirements are written in the product backlog. Okay? So the product backlog would have all the list of features that are needed to be implemented for that particular project. The duty of the product back owner is to prioritize the product backlog. Okay, so if there are 20 requirements in the product backlog, he will get them reprioritized after discussion with the stakeholders and users with the team and give a prioritized list to the team. Now, they product owner in association with team would have a sprint planning meeting where they will pick first two, probably depending upon the bandwidth that, that team has, they will pick up the most important, the first two, like one number two number is the most important priority after they have been uh, prioritized, right? They will first two and they will put that in a sprint backlog. Now, these two features would be would undergo discussion with product owner involving stakeholders and they will detail that out. This detailing is called user story writing and I write uh, acceptance criteria. Fine. 
So okay. once the acceptance criteria have been decided, sprint starts, you start implementing it. It could be a three day, four day uh, cycle. It would be a three to two to three days, uh, two to three weeks of, sorry, two to three weeks of cycle. They would be implemented. And uh, once the, to, in, with, with two to three weeks after this, has, this two requirements have been implemented, there is a demo, there is a review of the sprint. Then we collect a feedback from a client. Once we have a client feedback, we uh, have a sprint retrospective. This means the complete team and product owner comes and decides what went good in the sprint, what we should stop doing, what we should start doing more frequently, and how things can be changed, the process can be changed. While in a two to three weeks of cycle, they have a daily planning meeting, which is called a daily stand-up meeting. So this is not a, uh, the example which Debajit was giving for a Microsoft where product owner came in pretty late. It was a team. It was a daily stand-up meeting where team was just discussing what they had decided to do yesterday. If they have not been able to do, what are the reasons? What were the impediments because of which they were not able to do? It is a white board meeting, so we will talk about it uh, in length in the coming week. Uh, so it's a whiteboard meeting where everybody's name is jotted down, they have what they did yesterday, what are they planning to do, and if something is pending from in their plate from yesterday, why was it pending? This is all they discuss, and if they have a dependency on something, like uh, uh, maybe uh, I was working on a code but uh, the server went down, so X person is working on the server, bringing it up, so I have a dependency till that person is up, so they discuss all and try to resolve it how they can help each other, okay, and mm. how they can remove all the obstacles, okay. So this okay. is a typical uh, scrum structure. Okay. So the scrum is based on, again, five values, respect each other's work, okay. So if you are not respecting each other's work, when we are, for example, if we are doing a continuous uh, check-in, we are doing a continuous uh, check-in of a code, one did, another did not do, which impacted the other's work, right? You are disrespecting that person. So you should respect whatever each other is doing. Have com continuous feedbacks, okay? Sec third is courage. Have the courage to check in your code. If you're not confident enough, I mean, if you're checking it in, you would be probably able to understand where you are going because when you were checking in the code, your code would go and merge with other people's code as well. And probably that is where you, with the team effort, you would be able to solve it. Or if you have any doubts or if you have need any explanation while implementing something, have the courage to talk to your product owner. Don't think what he will think or what she will think, what would be the team's reaction that has started working and I don't have clarity. Have the courage to speak and interact. Communicate as much as possible and then keep things simple. Work on the priority, work on what is needed. Don't waste your extra effort on things which are not needed. So Kanban is nothing but a visual board basically. It's a visual task board. So where you have three columns, uh, not started, on in progress and done. Based on the requirements, probably you can have it, the ones which is being displayed here, like under analysis, you can put ongoing done. Maybe you are in, you are in the part of a sprint where you are in the middle of the sprint and you are also analyzing, uh, analyzing the sprint and plus one, right? So uh, you can have, you can break down in the way you want, but the basic three ways which we have not started in progress done. So the features that are the tasks we are working. So we have initially to start with, we have all the tasks in the not started uh, side. I pick feature one and two, our team starts working on it. Okay, and now feature one and two, the sticky note, they would be removed from not started field and they will move to in progress. They will only go, feature one and two will only move to done once the testing is complete, once the defects have been closed and there is no pending issue open against, open against it. Till that time, it will be only in, in progress. Okay, it would be, so to define, to make sure that something is done, we have a, something called definition of done which is created. 
So we follow the definition of done. So like if from a testing perspective, if I have to quote an example from a testing perspective, my definition of a done would be a website is would be completely tested when I have cross browser uh, tested it across the browsers when I have tested it across the platforms when I have tested the backend when I have tested the UI or when I have tested uh, the security if one of the fit if I have not done the cross browser testing my feature would not be complete it would remain in a pending state no. okay no. yeah so this is called work in progress limit but there is a limit internally when you start a project you will have to put a work in progress limit so for example under uh, in progress there are five items and in done there are two so i will not pull anything from not started to in progress till i at least clear the log in progress section i will make a hard stop at five we will decide on a limit at the beginning of the project that five is my limit so at point where I have five items or tasks in my in progress section I will make a halt complete the in progress move it to done and then start the new one this is called work in progress and the pull from pull thing in uh, Kanban is pulling from non started to uh, not started to in progress and then from in progress to I'm pulling it right I'm not going, nothing is pushing, no, nothing is going back from done to in progress. I'm just pulling it, I'm moving it forward, I'm not pushing it, right? So it's a pull technique. Okay? 